A person is embodied and situated spirit. What we mean by spirit is the quality of our being that exceeds and resists. All the structures of thought and of society that we build and inhabit. We are formed by conceptual and social orders that fail to exhaust us. There is always more in us than there is in them. At the end of the day, they never limit the range of our experience and of our powers. The discovery of this fact suggests to us that we are, in the language of an ancient metaphysic, the infinite, imprisoned within the finite. This relation between spirit and structure recurs in every department of our existence, but most directly in the nature of the mind. The mind has two aspects. Under one aspect, the mind is like a machine, modular and formulaic. Under another aspect, however, the mind is neither modular nor formulaic. It exhibits a power of recursive infinity to combine everything with everything else, and the faculty that the poet called negative capability, to become larger by transgressing its own methods and presuppositions. The relative relation between these two sides of the mind is not determined by the physical constitution of the brain. To the extent that society and culture are modeled on the imagination and based upon arrangements that invite their own revision, to that extent, the second side of the mind comes to prevail over the first. The history of politics is internal to the evolution of the mind. This view of the relation between spirit and structure lies at the very center of the revolutionary orthodoxy of the West. It has helped inspire and inform both the political projects of emancipation, democracy, liberalism, and socialism, and the popular romantic movement with its message of the godlike vocation of every ordinary man and woman. It develops by contrast to certain misdirections. I shall call these heresies in the fashion of patristic theology by the names of individuals. For the Hegelian heresy, we can progress toward a definitive structure of thought and of life able to accommodate everything that we have reason to value. The truth denied by the Hegelian heresy is that every structure remains flawed, subject to challenge and to change. The Hegelian heresy commits a sin of idolatry. According to the Sartrean heresy, every structure is the hand of Midas, freezing and killing spirit. We are fully human only in those interludes of rebellion in which we temporarily lift the burden of the structures. The truth denied by the Sartrean heresy is that we can change 
the character as well as the content of the structures, modifying the relation to spirit, creating structures that are better habitations for the spirit because they no longer exact surrender as the price of engagement. The Sartrean heresy commits a sin of despair. This view of the relation between spirit and structure is not just a speculative thesis. It has countless practical implications. For the organization of discourse and of inquiry, it suggests the goal of splitting the difference between revolutionary and normal science and creating forms of thought that defy their own assumptions and subordinate method to vision. For politics, it leads to the ideal of a structure of no structure, a set of arrangements and of assumptions that facilitate their own transformation. A market economy that is not fastened to a single version of itself, but establishes alternative regimes of private and social property coexisting experimentally within the same economic order so that more people can have more access to more markets in more ways. A high energy democracy establishing arrangements that elevate the temperature and hasten the pace of politics so that change ceases to depend upon crisis. For the orientation of existence, this thesis about the relation between spirit and structure requires that we resist the mummification to which we are all subject, the carapace of routine and compromise that begins to form around each of us and that slowly kills us, the surrender of the self to the rigidified form of its own nature, which is the character. We must rip the mummy apart, in particular by willing ourselves into circumstances that deny us our defenses, the better to continue living. Our reward for reorienting the practice of inquiry, the organization of society, and the conduct of life. In the light of this view of the relation between spirit and structure, is not eternal life, but life itself.